All right, let's call the Tuesday, April 25th, board action meeting to order. Please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Adams. Here. Dr. Anderson. Here. Mr. Caligiri. Here. Ms. Chutterwitz. Here. Mr. Devine. Here. Mr. Hill. Here. Mr. Sikolsky. Here. Mrs. Stutnik. Here. Ms. Wetmore. Present. Student Representative Ms. Lauren Price. Here. Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to apologize. I and very bad at planning vacations than I am in, in uh, Hillhead right now, so I apologize for not being there. Um, but we'll move on with the agenda. The board met the executive session on April 20th, 2023, and April 25th, 2023, to discuss matters of litigation, safety, personnel, and real estate. Uh, recommend approval of the following minutes as listed below. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstain? Motion passes. All right, we have uh, several recognitions tonight. Um, first, we're going to start with our school police department and Chief Tim Hanna. Good evening, everyone. As part of the Plum Borough School District's commitment to the Rachel's Challenge Program, I request that each of our school police officers recommend two students from their building to be recognized for not only displaying kindness and respect to staff and their classmates, but also a compassion and guardianship towards the safety and well-being of both themselves and their peers. I'd like to introduce our police officers who made these recommendations to present certificates of recognition as well as one of our new Plum School Police District or Plum School District Police Department challenge coins to the students. Officer J.C. Miller. Good evening. So tonight, I, I, I recommend two students. Uh, one is here tonight, Mr. Thomas Klinger, and also Eliana Devine. Unfortunately, she was unable to be with us tonight. Uh, Mr. Klinger, in my uh, time in Holiday Park uh, Intermediate School, has been an example of safety in and around the uh, campus. Uh, in particular, Mr. Klinger is a walker, and his behavior and his demeanor and how he carries himself and his consciousness towards safety as he crosses the walks and as he proceeds through the, uh, the park, the busy parking lot with buses and parents, uh, has been exemplary. And he is uh, certainly a person uh, that uh, his classmates and uh, students, staff, and faculty should be emulating. So, Mr. Klinger, this is an award for you. And here is one, you're the first recipient, I believe, of the Plum School District Police Department Challenge Coin. So. <laughs> If Eliana uh, Devine would have been here this evening, I would have been happy to uh, explain to uh, you all her behavior. She has been a consistently positive uh, uh, student within the school, helpful to friends and uh, younger students and also to the staff. And uh, uh, her presence is, is much appreciated within that school. Next, I'd like to introduce uh, Officer Michael Nesloff from Oblock Elementary. Good evening. Uh, I've been at uh, Oblock Field Center for two years now, and that time I got to know students a little better. Um, Little kids and I don't really mesh, and, but they make me feel welcome. A lot of highs, high fives, and everything in the building. But in this instance, uh, I 
went to the fourth grade staff and asked them who best exemplifies everything all in total, not just with safety, with the drills, but with the Rachel's Challenge. They gave me a short list. I recognize names on it that I've seen them do things that are safe, their interactions with students, they're always there, they're fourth graders, they're leaders in the building. They'll be moving on to Holiday Park next year and taking that leadership with them. And at this time I'd like to give you the first nomination, which was Sophie Coates. She's here this evening. <laughs> You're the second recipient. <laughs> so, Tony and Carter Lenhardt, who wasn't able to be here tonight, exemplify those things that very quietly are noticed in the school, and that's what we'd like to see. And it's been an honor to be able to nominate them here for you tonight. Next, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Officer Dwight Lock from uh, Pivik Elementary. Obviously, you can tell by Dwight, uh, he's uh, a little down and out right now, but uh, he did make his recommendations to me before he had his uh, procedure. And um, I'd like to call him up. He, uh, he's obviously here volunteering his time tonight. He hasn't worked for a few weeks now, but he showed up on his own because he wanted to make sure that he recognized the students. So thank you, Dwight. So we were all asked to nominate people. It was one of the hardest things that I had to do because there's so many good kids in our entire district and not just at Pivik. Um, the kids that I nominated, they're first graders. Um, I took a different tack than Officer Netzloff. These are kids that I started with last year in kindergarten and watched them up in the first grade. So uh, I'd like to call um, Josh Hanks, JJ. Come on over, buddy. <laughs> certificate. I've watched you. I've watched you get off the, out of your mom and dad's cars every day. You're, you're a perfect, responsible young lad, okay? <laughs> and uh, you're the third recipient of the challenge <laughs> point. Can I shake your hand, buddy? <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> All right. And the second one I nominated is uh, Emmy Halasowski. All right, now last year I saw her in kindergarten. She was in the same kindergarten class as my granddaughter. Everything that you ask this young lady to do, she does. You need her to bring papers up to the office. You need her to go around with the sunshine cart, all that stuff. She's right on it, always with a smile, ready to go. I think she's a good example of the Rachel's Challenge and just what we need in this district. Now I'd like to introduce Officer Jim Horwat from Plum Middle School. How you doing? Good evening. Um, being at the middle school, we all know that that's a difficult age. But they're great kids, and they've really stepped up. They, they take these drills seriously in school safety. <clears throat> and their maturity is beyond their years sometimes. They impress me with the questions that they ask me and the way they conduct themselves. Like, they're all business about safety. And for that age group, that's, that's amazing and that's great. And I could have nominated 30 kids for these two awards. But tonight, two, one is here, Kai Ekes. Or yeah, Kai. You're the, what, fourth or fifth now again? <laughs> but anyhow, he's great with other students. He takes security very seriously. He's very helpful to his, to his fellow students. He's a great kid. And the other student who's not here tonight, Kirsten Sully, same thing. She's always helpful to other students, takes security very seriously, and I'm proud of all my kids at that school. Okay. Thank you. Lastly, uh, the two kids that were nominated from the high school, as well as Officer Joe Locke, couldn't be here today. But uh, Officer Locke recommended and recognized Richard Caroline and Bryn McAlevey. Um, one of these students, when, when Joe recommended, I should, should show you folks, 
I mean, Dr. Walsh and I, all we do is talk safety and security constantly, and we try to redo our EOPs and do stuff every year to upgrade things. And uh, this one student said to Officer Locke, uh, do all the teachers know, or staff members know, where all our uh, AEDs are? And Joe looked at me, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. And Joe said, uh, so that's going into our EOPs next year. For each <laughs> so uh, that's why she was recognized. But uh, neither of them could be here. But I do want to do one more thing before we're done. Uh, the guys behind me are first line of defense. I'm proud of them. They do a hell of a job. District's lucky to have them. And we're lucky to work for this district. So thank all of you for your continued support. Next, we have Dr. Schuler from Holiday Park Intermediate. Good evening, members of the school board. We would also like to call up uh, Sophia Kalazi, Molly Marks, John Taylor, and Cooper Spenick at this time. We thank you for allowing us to be here tonight to present to you a very important piece of Holiday Park Intermediate School in regards to our culture of literacy as we continue to develop our readers and in support of our strategic goals of helping to increase levels of student achievement and increasing academic rigor with our instruction. This evening I have for you um, two of our MTSS teachers, Mrs. Wickersey and Mrs. Hartley, and several members of our Holiday Park Reading League Hall of Fame to talk to you about an important addition to our culture of literacy. So I'd like to turn this over right now to Mrs. Wickersey and Mrs. Hartley. Good evening, school board and Plum community. I'm Jackie Hartley. I have um, Kelly Wickerstee with me here also. We are the Reading Intervention Teachers at Holiday Park Intermediate. In addition to working with our groups, um, we run a school-wide independent reading incentive program known as the Holiday Park Reading League. Tonight we are proud to recognize a few of our HPRL Hall of Fame readers. These outstanding students will share their reading achievements as well as some exciting news at Holiday Park Intermediate. At this time, we'll hand it over. Hello, my name is Sophia Kalazi. I'm in fifth grade at Holiday Park Intermediate School, and I'm a member of the HVRL Hall of Fame with 740 AR points. Good evening, esteemed members of the school board. We are thrilled to share some exciting news with you all today. Our Holiday Park Intermediate Community of Readers has recently acquired a cutting-edge book vending machine from our PTO that will revolutionize the way we promote, we promote our reading through the community. As we all know, encouraging every student to develop a love for reading is essential to their academic success and personal growth. With the introduction of our new book vending machine, we are taking a creative and innovative approach to inspire our students to read more and explore the joys of literature. Good evening, my name is Cooper Spenick, grade five student of Holiday Park Intermediate and member of the HPRL Hall of Fame with 610 AR points. This book vending machine is not just an ordinary vending machine. It's a gateway to a world of imagination and discovery. Imagine the excitement on our students' faces as they select a book from a wide range of genres and watch the machine dispense as their chosen book right in front of their eyes. It's a truly magical experience that will captivate their imaginations and ignite their passion for reading. One of the key benefits of the book vending machine is that it caters to students of all reading levels and interests. We have carefully curated a diverse selection of books that span, a dif span different genres, reading levels, and topics. This means that every student in our school, from reluctant, from, from reluctant readers to advanced bookworms, we will find something that interests them and motivates them to read more. It is a fantastic way to foster a reading culture in our school and promote inclusivity among our students. Hello, my name is John Taylor. 
I'm in grade 5, student of Holiday Park Intermediate, member of the HPRL Hall of Fame with 463 AR points. Furthermore, the book Vending Machine will be integrated into our existing reading insensitive programs, adding an exciting new element to our efforts to motivate our students to read. Students will have the opportunity to earn tokens or rewards that can be used to purchase books from the vending machine, creating a sense of achievement and pride as they build their personal book collections. It's a win-win situation where our students are rewarded for their reading efforts and their love for books is nurtured in the process. As a school, we are committed to promoting literacy and instilling a lifelong love for reading in our students. The introduction of the book vending machine is as a bold, exciting step towards achieving the goal. It's a unique and innovative approach that will captivate our students' imaginations, motivate them to read more, and broaden their literary horizons. Hello, my name is Molly Marks, grade 6, student of Holiday Park Intermediate, member of the HPRL Hall of Fame with 478 AR points. In conclusion, the community reader of readers of Holiday Park Intermediate is thrilled to share this exciting news with the esteemed members of the school board. The book vending machine is a game changer for our school, and we believe it will have a profound and positive impact on our students' reading habits and academic achievements. Thank you for, con for your continued support in promoting literacy and fostering a love for reading among our students of Holiday Park Intermediate School. So as you can see here, and students, if you could stay up here, we, we do have a certificate we would like to present to you, uh, just overwhelmed with excitement uh, for this addition to our culture of literacy. And as you heard, with our unconditional support by our Holiday Park PTO, uh, the executive board and the members, which just when we talked about this, this cloud thought, um, encouraged by Ms. Mrs. Wickersey and Mrs. Hartley, um, the question was, how do we take it from the clouds to the ground? And this was not made possible without our Holiday Park PTO. So again, we would like to thank our PTO for this. Thank you students for, for driving this, um, allowing us and, and feeding our, our passion for learning to you, okay? And we do have a certificate we would like to give you at this time. So, Sophia, congratulations. Okay. Molly. Okay. John. And Cooper. Thank you. Okay, next we'll have Dr. Himner from the Plum Senior High School. Good evening. Thank you to the esteemed school board and community members for the opportunity to present some of our students here this evening. It is my honor to, sh to share their successes here with you and with the entire Mustang community. Recently, Forbes Career and Technology Center held their annual National Technical Honor Society Banquet, where they inducted 32 students into this prestigious program. In order to be inducted into the society, a, stu a student must demonstrate the following. A student must be a second or third year student and be in 11th or 12th grade. The student must have earned a technical program grade of 93% or higher. The student must be recommended by their instructor, be involved in extracurricular activities, volunteer work or paid employment, have no disciplinary history, and have an excellent attendance record. Out of the 32 students inducted into this MTHS at Forbes, seven of those students were Mustangs. I would like to acknowledge these students publicly before our community and in our board this evening as well. As I call you up, please come to the podium to receive your recognition. Gina O'Toole. <laughs>
Kaylin Sullivan. Gage Streams. Jordan Oshie. Elena Madonna. Armani Del Jaco. Um, and Kaylin, to put you on the spot, the board likes to know what seniors are doing. So I'll pass the mic Half to you. In general. in general. Yep. Thank you. What are your yeah. plans beyond high school? Uh, next year, I will be attending Pitt Greensburg and joining their nursing, their nursing program. Yes. Thank you all for joining us tonight. If you were here for student recognitions, um, you are welcome to leave at this time if you are not willing to stay for the whole meeting. <laughs> Have a great evening. I think we're okay to continue now. Thank you. All right. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to look forward to some comments on agenda items. If there's anybody in the audience that would like to make a comment on an agenda item, we ask you to step to the podium one at a time, state your name, your residency within Plum, and you will have five minutes to speak to the board. We ask you to direct all comments to the presiding board officers. And just a reminder that this is a time to share your comments um, as opposed to a time for a question and answers with the board. Um, if there's anybody at this time, you can step forward. Hey, Mr. Devine, back to you. Thank you. Um, I can offer a president's report tonight. Um, Dr. Hartley, superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Devine. Some important items that are noteworthy for the community to know. Tonight, the board will be passing curricular resources for the fine arts program. These curricular resources are absolutely critical if we are to exceptionally prepare our students for success and produce students who are well-rounded citizens. In fact, over the past four years, the district will have invested over $3.5 million into the three A's, a commitment to academics, athletics, and tonight, a recommitment to, fi to the fine arts program with the resources our students need to excel and showcase their God-given talents. I want to publicly thank the board for their commitment to excellence through word, through action, and through deed by ensuring our students have the best curricular resources available. A couple of important announcements. We ask parents to look out for our upcoming annual parent student survey that will most likely be passed by the board tonight. This survey provides the district with valuable feedback on how our families feel about their perceptions about our performance as a district and provide data as to how we can continuously improve. Parents should be looking out for an email 
on or about May 8th with a link to their individual survey. Students in grades 4, 6, 8, and 12 will be taking the survey as well. A quick reminder to our students and parents that May 16th is primary election day in Pennsylvania and students will be off that day. We are now at the halfway point of the fourth nine week grading period of the school year. There are many end of year events that are occurring in the next few weeks, such as academic awards nights, senior nights for spring sports, concerts, prom, and graduation day for the class of 2023. The date has been set for uh, Wednesday, May 24th, outside our stadium at 7 p.m., weather permitting. We are expecting a wonderful celebration of our seniors as we wish them the very best of luck as they move on from the Plum Borough School District. And Mr. Devine, that concludes my report for tonight. Thank you. Um, student representative's report. Thank you. I would like to begin tonight with some activity updates. Last week, 22 PHS seniors were notified that they were nominated for Outstanding Senior. This is a recognition granted to two Plum Senior High School seniors by faculty from each of the 11 departments. The male and female winners of the competition will give a speech at graduation. This year's Outstanding Senior nominees are Noah Carter, Cody Chill, Thomas Sumo, Nathaniel Beninati, Dylan Kane, Alexander Taylor, Eric Moore, Griffin Orsic, Connor Piverato, Logan Kemmer, Alec Elise, Audrey Bell, Victoria Cachetti, Alyssa Warner, Emma Kilmeyer, Lauren Price, Annabelle Orhan, Ava Baker, Emily Barat, Sarah Kavortek, Carissa Smouse, and Carly Beninati. I would like to explain the next steps of this competition. On Thursday, a Google form was sent out for all senior students to vote upon who they would like to elect as outstanding senior. I have received some negative feedback on this popular vote portion of the competition. Considering that outstanding senior is a replacement for valedictorian, the winner should be based on academic achievement, not popularity among the students. I was informed that this portion will be reevaluated for next year and hope that it will be seriously reconsidered. On Monday, the top three males and females wrote a time reflection essay and gave their graduation speech to an anonymous panel of judges. The top three males and females are Dylan Kane, Alexander Taylor, Thomas Sumo, Annabelle Orhan, Emily Barat, and Emma Kilmeyer. The winners will be announced during the spring pep rally on Friday, April 28th. Plum Senior High School's prom will be held at the Omni William Penn on May 12th from 6 to 10. This year's theme is a masquerade and Promenade will be held at the High School Auditorium at 4.30. Prom Court will be voted upon this week and announced at the Spring Pep Rally. Last Friday, television production students, members of National Honor Society, cheerleaders, and the swim team came together to film a Pittsburgh sports-themed lip dub. The video should be released this week on YouTube. Please encourage your family and friends to watch the talent and hard work of the Plum students to create this year's lip dub. On April 17th, the class of 2024 was inducted into the National Honor Society. This year's officers are Amelia Foss, Kate Monick, Haley Depcon, and Sophie Anderson. Finally, the April Mustangs of the month are seniors Cameron Collins, Lauren Price, Carissa Smouse, Hannah Terabessi, and Jade Turner, juniors Gloria Casey, Joshua Hudson, and Tyler Pallotta, freshmen Dylan Simmons and Mason Swagger, and teacher Matt Magnuson. That's everything I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, first, I'll look to Anderson Lee Board Liaison. Uh, recommend approval to accept and resolve the following one four is listed. On behalf of the board, I'll make that recommendation. Thank you. Do we motion or second? Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you, Stan. Motion passes. Stop the report tonight. I do not have a report tonight, thanks. Thank you. Due to achievement and activities, Dr. Anderson, Lee Board Liaison recommended approval to accept and resolve the following one to five as listed. On behalf of the board, I'll make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion to second. Any additional discussion? All in favor? 
Aye. 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 <coughs> All opposed? Any abstain? Motion passes. Uh, anything to report tonight? No, nope, just to reiterate what Dr. Highland had already said. Um, just really excited for the fine arts curriculum to be passed and to see that move forward uh, next year. Thank you. Yep. Let's take the support of school. Mr. Adams and board liaison recommended approval to accept and resolve the MOU renewal with Plumboro Police for 2023 through 2025. On behalf of the board, I'll make that recommendation. Second. We will motion to second. Any further discussion? Just Dr. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Mr. Devine, <laughs> Dr. Highland, I'd like to thank both the Plum Police and our school, uh, Plum Borough School District Police for continuously working together for the betterment of our kids and our safety. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion passes. Um, Mr. Adams, anything to report tonight? Yeah, a few things. Um, echo what Ms. Stepnick just said as well. Um, but uh, yeah, just a few things to pass here. All severe weather drills are scheduled to be completed at all K through 12 buildings by the end of the month. This drill is required by the state to be completed every year uh, in the month of April. Um, challenge coins were ordered by Chief Hanna, as we saw earlier. Uh, the coins have the district logo on one side and a replica of the school police badge on the other. The school police officers will be giving these coins to students who exhibit a strong sense of safety awareness for their classmates, staff, and themselves. And lastly, the district participated in a cybersecurity tabletop at the AIU. This was an opportunity for our safety and security team to review protocols, discuss best practices, and continue to refine our cybersecurity plan. And that's everything I have. Back to you. Thank you. Budget finance to start with, the board liaison recommended approval to accept and resolve the following one and two is listed. On behalf of the board, I'll make that recommendation. Second. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Ms. Macro, I'll be abstaining from the line item in um, the report that just piece of my father's paycheck. Um, motion passes. Ms. Tucker, was there anything to report tonight? Um, just a quick um, highlight of the important dates to remember in regards to the budget timeline tonight. Um, we passed to adopt the proposed final budget on May 10th. The school district deadline to make the proposed final budget for inspection to the public display on May 20th. The school district deadline to notice the intent to adopt the final budget and on May 30th the district will adopt the final budget on form PDE 2028. And that is all I have for tonight. Thank you. Facilities and Operations, Mr. Hill, the board liaison, recommend approval to accept and resolve the following line two as listed below. On behalf of the board, I'll make that recommendation. Second. Second. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion passes. Mr. Hill, anything to report tonight? Uh, nothing on facilities. Nope. All right. Forbes Road, CTC. Mr. Hill, we board the on anything to report tonight? Yeah, uh, just uh, go on the Forbes Road CTC Facebook page. They're looking for our seniors to submit their photo and post-graduation plans so they can feature them on their social media site. Uh, just provide, just email them to kdb at forbesroad.com. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Governor uh, Myself, the board liaison. Uh, nothing really to report tonight, uh, just that we are working with the borough, um, looking for uh, and trying to help them find a student rep to sit on council. Um, so hopefully uh, we can get that off the ground and running uh, next month and then get somebody over to them for next school year. Let's play with Mrs. Stepnick, we board liaison, on anything to report tonight. I do have a report. I'm actually just going to merge uh, the, the two if I can. Um, last Tuesday, April 18th, I participated on the PSBA Day of the Hill. Uh, it was a remote 
uh, meetings rather than in person, which we had all originally thought it would be, uh, due to the House representatives not being in session that week. Uh, I was able to meet with two of our three legislators, and uh, Representative Brandon Markosik and Senator Jim Brewster. And on career day, I actually was able to speak briefly with Representative Joe McAndrew, who is a new representative to our, our area. And he and I are going to get together to chat about legislative priorities um, and, and some of the things which PSBA uh, we're advocating for. Uh, and I know this is the first time in probably two years that we've had uh, a legislative update, and there's probably a lot that we could cover, but the main topic that we covered was the court's decision on the fair funding formula and its impact. Uh, there seems to be, for the first time due to that, that court decision, uh, a real conversation going on in the Capitol regarding cyber charter reform and a particular focus on uh, the special education funding and the imbalance with that statewide. Um, in addition, PSBA advocated for a statewide student reimbursement for all students in Cyber Charter. And I'm always, always, when it comes to that, unless I see the numbers and I can compare, I refrain from that conversation. <laughs> so if it's more than we're paying, I'm probably not going to advocate for that. But statewide, they would like to see, and then I understand the reasoning. They Statewide, they'd like to see uh, one number because these are companies that are operating statewide. Uh, there's an estimated $185 million to $200 million in overpayments, cyber charter funding statewide, just for special education alone. Um, there's a budget surplus this year of about $5 billion. In June will be the focal point for those budget negotiations. PSBA's goals were to ask for $100 million in increase in mental health supports uh, and an additional $100 million in school safety funding. Uh, there's a general consensus that the court decision will take the legislature into the summer and beyond to have a final resolution as sort of most of us anticipated that it would go well beyond June 30th. Um, there was also discussion, uh, and I know this has been brought up, and Ms. Whitmore and I both brought it up when we participated in the legislative forum with AIU, uh, and it was discussed there as well. Um, there's discussion on the proposal to extend free lunch and free breakfast to all children statewide. There's currently no fiscal note for this proposal. Uh, Representative Markosik was clear he wants to see the cost on the state and the districts and can it be absorbed. That's the first thing. The second thing is how long can that program be sustained? He doesn't want to do a program or vote for something. And he said that seems to be the general consensus to, for one or two years rather than is this something we can keep for 5, 10, 15 years uh, so people can plan for it and districts can plan. So he's waiting for the fiscal note on that. Um, and Senator Brewster did mention, we, we talked a lot about uh, sort of how everybody fared after COVID and of course his cyber charter reform bill that he's been trying to pass for numerous years in the legislature. And he did give uh, props to Plum for our PDLA and our doing our best to keep our students in our district and controlling those funds. And again, keeping our kids where, where they're home with, with their other students. Um, and he had, did pass around his uh, cyber charter reform bill for all of us to read. Um, on Thursday, April 20th, I participated in career day with the Plum Chamber of Commerce along with 60 other professionals. Uh, our students were given a wide variety of careers to hear about, ask questions, and learn what a day-to-day -day could look like for their future plans. I'm looking forward to seeing this program grow and the relationship between the business community and the school district grow. And as part of my community outreach, that, that's a pretty cool thing to, to watch. Um, also under community outreach, the PTO President's Council will be electing their officers next week and setting the agenda for the next school year and beyond, hopefully, for the concession stand and being able to set goals uh, on what we're going to give to schools for donations as well as scholarships. Um, and last but definitely not least, uh, I was literally dancing in my living room when we got the email from Holiday Park. I'm beyond excited for the book vending machine, and I was dancing by myself. It was kind of embarrassing. Um, Dr. Shuo and his staff set a goal, and when it was brought to the PTO, without hesitation, uh, that group of parents was more than willing to immediately fund it and figure out how to get that book vending machine into the, to, into the school. So I can't wait to see it in action, and I hope I get a coin or two so I can see how it works. But yeah, that's it. At PDLA, we have 118 full-time students in there. It's about 20,000 yeah. students, $2.3 million. Yeah. It's absolutely, and that, that's one thing that... Um, Senator Brewster out. said that he goes, you were able to, I said, we were able to, to do it, create it, sustain it, and, and you just build it into the budget, and, and it's been a huge cost savings or a way to minimize that cost for us. So um, I was, there were some other board members that I don't typically socialize with on that, that 
particular Zoom. So hopefully those are ideas that can continue being passed through. Actually, the president of AIU is there on that call. So He's also the president of PSBA. I know. <laughs> but at that point, it was we're Allegheny County. So. <laughs> there you go. That's it. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Um, you know, this is the first time in months we don't have anything to update on policy. Um, and I don't know if I'm grateful or not grateful because <laughs> maybe something's coming. But uh, policy will be keeping an eye on all the legislative matters that Mrs. Stepnick mentioned. And uh, we'll see if there are going to be any kind of recommendations from the administration based on the surveys that will come out to the parents and the, the students. So we'll keep everybody advised. And that's it. Thank you. That brings inclusion to what more the liaison anything to report tonight. Um, just a brief report. First, I wanted to share that the AIU held its elections on April 10th, and I am excited that I have been re-elected to their board of direction directors, along with James Bulger from Steel Valley, Phil Little from North Hills, and Tisha Thomas from East Allegheny, who also retained their seats. It is an honor to have been selected by school board directors across the county to represent their interests at the IU level. And I feel that the role also gives me increased access to understanding the programming and tools available to us as a district through the AIU, as well as direct access to members of 12 other local school districts with whom I can share best practices and find out what issues are impacting public education at large. And um, I also wanted to mention that I did receive feedback from some folks in the community that our equity and inclusion page was not f working for them. Um, that issue has been resolved and there's some great information on the page as well as a link to our Rachel Challenge activities. So I encourage everyone to check it out. Thank you. Community engagement, outreach, and development. Mrs. Mrs. Stepnick, the board liaison. Recommend approval to accept and resolve the following as listed. On behalf of the board, I'll make that recommendation. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, I do. All opposed? I think Mr. Sikolsky has comment. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. I have a comment. I will not be agreeing to allowing the confidentiality clause to be open, pursuant to my attorney's advice. These clauses are standard usage. Not only has confidential documentation already been released in social media and not dealt with, but I was not found to break the clause. Information on my retirement has already been disseminated, not by me or my union. I will continue to fulfill my promises and doing what you, Plumborough, elected me to do, all of Plum. Thank you. Can you tell us who your attorney is? No. Uh, Mr. Dice, can you confirm for us that uh, what he just said was accurate about the uh, not breaking the confidentiality agreement, which was clearly done over the weekend, well, over the last week? My, my would again just note that talking about any of the events that occurred prior to the confidentiality agreement would be breaking the confidentiality agreement. I've advised the board of that several times. And I think to the extent there were any posts that talked about um, things that occurred prior to the passage of the confidentiality agreement, mainly charges that would be violative of the confidentiality agreement. And is Mr. Sikulski free to uh, allow for us to re resolve or um, waive the confidentiality agreement and that it's not a dictate of the school district to do so? Uh, he's free to do so if he would like to. Um, obviously, that's his individual choice, but um, and he has to consult with his legal counsel about that. But if you were to ask, does he have the ability to do so? Sure. Can we also clarify that Mr. Sikulski just said he was found to not have broken the confidentiality agreement? That's not in relation to what currently happened over the last week. 
That, that's correct. That's in regard to things that occurred a year-ish ago, something yep. like that. Perfect. Just to clarify for the, the vote, the vote is the board voting to conditionally waive our right in the event Mr. Sapolsky does change his mind and sign it. So we can continue forward with the vote as is on the agenda, correct? Uh, correct. Uh, the vote passed. And I believe it was unanimous. And can I, I would also like to clarify, Mike, to that end, it's conditional and that the board members in good conscience and good faith are remaining and abiding by the confidentiality agreement until such time that that occurs. And so I just want to combat what Mr. Sikolsky said, that no one is free to talk about this. And so anybody who is speaking about it is in breach of that. And there are many board members who are remaining incredibly silent um, because we're attempting to abide by what we signed in good faith, while others are not abiding by the same. I, I just want to reiterate what Dr. Anderson said, that the confidentiality clause is still very much so live, and uh, everyone on this board and in this district, for that matter, needs to abide by it. Thank you. Dan, can I get clarification? I thought I heard that it, the vote was unanimous. Correct. I, I didn't vote. Yeah, I believe I heard you say I. I did not say, I said I to speak, not to vote. If it was misinterpreted, I did not, I would not vote yes to this. I would abstain. I would abstain. I asked, yes, can we redo the vote? That would be fine. Can we redo the vote and do a roll call, please? Yes. If the vote already passed and there was any, um, and there was not a uh, affirmative no, the silent vote counts as a yes vote, correct, uh, Mr. Dyson? Yes. There were no. Mr. Devine, um, if I could please request a re-vote. Um, I did not find it to be unanimous. Yes. Okay. I defer to the if secretary. Please go to the roll call. For a roll call vote, I will start at the top of the list from where we left off last time. It is a rotating alphabetical order. Um, what we will be voting on is whether or not you do want to conditionally waive should Mr. Sikolsky also agree to waive as an individual. So if you say yay, then you are agreeing to this. If you say no, then you do not want the board to conditionally waive. Um, Mrs. Stepnick? Yes. Mrs. Wetmore? Yes. Mr. Adams? Yes. Dr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Calagiri? Yes. Ms. Chatterwitz? I have never abstained from a vote, but what this board and administration is doing is disgusting, and I want no part of it. Um, some students have publicly said that we should all be ashamed of ourselves, and with that, I... I abstain. Mr. Devine? Yes. Mr. Hill? Yes. Mr. Sikolsky? I, uh, I abstain. Point of order, is there, are these uh, good grounds to abstain from a vote just because you don't feel like voting on it? It doesn't have to be a valid reason to abstain. Um, Mr. Sikolsky maybe has a valid reason because he doesn't want to incriminate himself of whatever be careful. Is, uh, alleged in the... Uh, the issues that led to his agreement, but uh, I believe Ms. Chatterwitz has no reason to abstain. She should vote. Um, if I could fill in there, ultimately, there's a lot of scholarly articles written about why people should and shouldn't vote, but ultimately, if a board member wants to abstain, they have the right to abstain from any vote, um, legally speaking. So, so you, have a, you don't have a preference. You just want to stay out of it instead of say no? Don't, don't tell her how to talk. She's a grown woman. She doesn't need direction from you. I'm asking her a question. I'm and, just I don't asking need you you and I don't need insinuations from you I'm, either. I'm updating Mr. Caligari. That's right. This is a vote of seven board members voting yes, two board members voting to abstain. This motion would pass should Mr. Sikulski decide as an individual to waive the agreement as well. 
Thank you. Thank you. At this time, let's open the floor to citizens' comments on non-agenda items. If anybody in the audience would like to make a comment on non-agenda items, we ask you to step to the microphone one at a time to speak. You will have five minutes to speak to the board. Um, please state your name, your address within Plum. Um, whenever you're finished speaking, we just ask you to step to the clipboard right over here and write your name down so I spell it correctly for the minutes. Um, just a reminder, again, this is a time where you can um, voice your comments to the board rather than it being a question and answer session with the board. And please direct your comments directly to the presiding board members. Is there anybody that would like to make comment at this time? Mr. Devine, back to you. Thank you. We welcome the public meetings. We have a board discussion meeting on Tuesday, May 9th, 2023 at 7 o'clock in the high school library. And then a board action meeting on Tuesday, May 30th, 2023 at 7 o'clock in the high school uh, library. This is like to call the meeting adjourned over motion to second. Motion. Second. second. All in favor? Take something. Aye. 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 That's the Aye. fastest motion you get. <laughs>